Welcome into this edition of Buck Update Central, our buck, and I'm Parker Schwartz. We'll take you around the gridiron for all the highlights from ETSU Athletics. We'll go to the volleyball court, look at what women's soccer did, men's soccer here as well at Summers Taylor Stadium, and what ETSU football did in their first week. Here's the highlights. In the first quarter, the Bucks forced a fumble on quarterback Trey White and marched down 23 yards here on a completion to Chad Pritchard from Austin Herrick. And then in came J.J. German to make it 3 to nothing ETSU early in the second quarter. At halftime, the Bucks trailed 7 to 3 but came out with reckless abandon in the second half. Jawan Stinson in the open field shedding tacklers. He almost had 100 yards on the night. And then this pass from Austin Herrick to Dalton Ponchilla extending into the end zone ended up being just a yard short and Stinson would punch it through to make it 10-7 ETSU. One thing the Bucks would do extremely well was keeping up the defensive pressure as Khalil Mitchell sacks quarterback Trey White. Owl saw a lot of that from ETSU the entire evening. Later in the second half, Austin Herring rolling out showing his athleticism and tight roping the sideline Vincent Lowe with a heck of a catch downfield. That drive would continue. Austin Herrick again looking to his right and finding low. This was the big hit, though. Darren Artis with the clash, and then a forced fumble gave ETSU the ball with under three minutes left. Game tied 10-10 into overtime. Both teams scored in the opening session, and the second OT, Kennesaw State's Trey White going down, and Austin Herrick on a third and long, heaving it downfield. He finds Hank Black for the big reception. Back on the Bucks within field goal range. And here's how the game ended, courtesy of David Jackson on the call. An improbable 20-17 win in double overtime for ETSU, their first season opening win since 2000. The Bucks play Western Carolina at Bristol Motor Speedway Saturday, September 17th. The Bucks in action at Summers. Taylor against George Mason. The Patriots on the board here in the 14th minute, but the Bucks would answer with two goals of their own here in the first half. The first one by Zhao Hamayo. Nice touch there left of the goal. Bring it in nicely there. And then also Xavier Alberto. This one from a longer distance, and the Buccaneer offense in full force. In the second half, George Mason would tie it up 2-2 in the 69th minute, but the Bucks would retort with two goals of their own. It was Cameron Woodfin with his first goal of the season off the deflection to make it three to two bucks. That's all they will need. But in the final minutes, Cameron Snyder sent the PK into the net to secure the game for the Buccaneers four to two. The other match, a one nothing win for the Bucks last Saturday against Appalachian State. The 1-0 shutout thanks to Cameron Woodfin's game-winning goal, the Buccaneer that received SoCon Player of the Week. He was able to receive Fletcher Eckern's pass in the 51st minute. The Bucks are now 2-1 overall on the season. Their next match, Friday, September 9th, against West Virginia at 7 p.m. And how about the ETSU volleyball team? Lindsey Devine's squad with the best start in school history, 6 and oh, they opened their season in Brooks Gym last week with the return of the Double Tree Hotel Buccaneer Challenge. The Buccaneers began the tournament with a 3 0 win over Austin P and N State rival. Riley Millhorn and Brianna Allman combined for 20 kills. The women faced Troy and USC Upstate the following day, where they continued their win streak and they swept all three matches. This past weekend, the Bucks traveled to Lynchburg, Virginia to compete in the Liberty Invitational. Being on the road seemed to not phase the Bucks at all. The Bucks managed to drop only one set in the entire tournament. In the first match, the Bucks took out Hampton 3 0. Three players, AJ Lux, Riley Millhorn, and Brianna Allman, had 10 kills or more. Then the Bucks took out USC Upstate again, this time 3 to 1, and up their kills to 65. ETSU held USC Upstate to a .099 hitting percentage, outscoring the Spartans by 19 over the final three frames. And finally, the host school, Liberty, was no test for the Bucks, who took out the Flames 3 to nothing. Setter Alyssa Cavarta of Crown Point, Indiana, tallied a double-double with 38 assists and 10 digs. 
The Bucks' next challenge is this weekend at Clemson, where they play the Tigers, North Dakota, and Tulane. As for women's soccer, their first match we'll talk about at Davidson last Thursday, a 4-3 loss. The Bucks had a career night from sophomore Irina Bruch. She recorded her first goal of the season and two assists. The Bucks had a season high, 22 shots. The other contest was last Sunday at Marshall. The Bucks encountered a 3-0 defeat. ETSU only recorded seven shots. And it was the first time Adam Sayers' club has been shut out since October 2015 against Samford. From Boone, North Carolina men's and women's cross country, the Covered Bridge Open. The women's place fifth with a total of 137 points, two runners in the top 30, Victoria Hutchins 15th, and Macy Carrier of Bluff City reeled in a 22nd place showing. The men's team, on the other hand, also had a good showing. Seven of the 12 runners finished in the top 30. The pace setter, senior Simeon Roberts of Greenville, a 12th place finish. Other notables included Daniel Sonnenfeld of Knoxville and Zach Summerall, who placed 17th and 18th, respectively. Well, it was an exciting week of ETSU athletics action. We'll have a full slate of highlights for you next week on the next edition of Buck Update Central.